construction equipment. You own it, you move it all the time. But do you really know what type of trailer you should be using or the securement that is required? Hi, this is Troy with ATS. In this video, Charlie, our securement specialist, is going to be securing a front end loader. By using the techniques gained in this video, you'll be able to move your heavy equipment safely from point A to point B. My name is Charlie with the ATS Safety Department. Uh, I'm one of the securement instructors, and today we're going to be talking about uh, heavy equipment and securement of heavy equipment. The first thing we're looking at on any piece of heavy equipment is what defines it. What, in the far as regulatory uh, requirements go, what defines a piece of heavy equipment instead of just general freight? A piece of heavy equipment is defined by DOT as something that has tires or tracks and weighs more than 10,000 pounds. So this uh, front end loader would fit that requirement as it has tires and it weighs more than 10,000 pounds. So what does that mean? Well, when a piece of equipment gets defined as heavy equipment for DOT, it needs a minimum requirement of four securements. And that's gonna mean two securements at the back of the product and two securements on the front of the product at minimum. So depending on the size of the chain the driver's using and depending on the weight of the equipment, Four, more than four might be needed. A driver might need six or eight, depending on those other factors. So in this case, because of this loader weighs about 30,000 pounds, uh, this driver has chosen to use four half-inch chain. And part of securing a piece of heavy equipment is choosing the proper equipment for that stuff. Now this driver chose half-inch, so half-inch chain is worth 11,300 pounds each. So in this case, the driver's got four of those total, two at the back and two at the front. That's given him roughly 45,000 pounds uh, of securement credit. So with this loader weighing about 30,000 pounds, the driver has well more than enough to cover for that minimum standard. As far as securing the uh, chains to the equipment, it's important that we stay to the locations where there is actual uh, defined and um, manufactured securement points. So this loader is manufactured with two securements at the back of the product and that allows us to connect to the proper location on the piece and securing it down to the trailer itself. So in this case, we're using the securement point on the loader down to the D-ring on the trailer. The driver has brought his hooks back to the chain, both on the chain itself and on the binders. All of our hooks are located back on chain. Also, since we have chains touching up here, the driver has used padding between those chains prevent any chance of damage occurring from chain to chain. Continuing on with the front end of this loader, driver has also used two chains on this end also connecting from the securement points on the machine uh, down to the trailer. So with those four points, that covers our minimum standard or minimum requirement for heavy equipment. And since those chains were rated high enough to thus cover the weight of the loader, the driver has secured to meet minimum standards. A couple other things that we're looking for on a piece of heavy equipment uh, is does it have any hydraulic accessories and also does it articulate. Articulate basically means bending in the middle to steer. In this case, this front end loader has both of those. The arms on this front end loader raise and lower on hydraulics. So by regulation, we need to lower them and then secure them uh, down to the trailer. This is done by using a strap or a chain to go across, in this case, the arms of this loader or whatever hydraulic accessory uh, your equipment might have. So another uh, piece on this equipment that we need to talk about is the fact that it articulates and that needs to be protected and stopped during transit. Now articulation basically means a product that b steers, not by the tires turning left and right, but by the whole body actually bending in the middle or pivoting. In this case, this front end loader uses a lockout bar. Demonstrated here, this red colored bar pins on each half of the machine during transit and prevents articulation, effectively locking it out. Sometimes pieces of equipment that articulate don't necessarily have that lockout bar available. In that case, basically what needs to be done is it has to be, the piece of equipment still needs to be secured in a way that prevents it. And we can use chains in that case to take the place of what that bar would have been doing. Effectively, you have to treat the front half and the back half of the machine as if they were separate and secure them as such. Then the securement itself actually prevents articulation. This machine uh, actually is also equipped with securement points in the center, which is a, a nice benefit. Should the 
should the weight of the machine itself be greater or maybe the driver is using a little lighter weight chain where no, more chains are needed. Those additional securement points on the machine can then be used uh, to help make sure that machine is secured to meet DOT standards. Another thing I'd like to point out that this driver did, um, you know, part of certainly transporting a piece of equipment is just getting it from A to B. But also, we want to make sure we're taking care of that equipment during its transport. This driver has used padding uh, beneath the securements, both on the strap here and then also on the chains on this bucket. And that padding is really there just to protect the piece of equipment. Uh, we certainly don't want to scratch it or beat it up um, and cause any undue damage during transport. Those are the uh, just additional costs that the customer incurs and then they have to end up fixing that piece before it goes out uh, to, the, to the end user. So also in this case, the bucket on this shipment was shipped separate from the loader itself. In that case, the bucket needs to be secured as a standalone item. So when we're looking at the bucket, a couple things to consider. You know, we have the weight of the bucket to consider, but also the length of the bucket. And because of the length in this scenario, that bucket's going to require at least two securements. Anytime you have a product that exceeds five feet in length or exceeds 1,100 pounds that's sitting by itself, it requires at least two securements. So this driver has two chains over the top of the bucket, again with the padding, and that would at least uh, sec certainly secure it and cover it for minimums. Additionally, this driver added a strap around the back of it just to add additional securements and make sure that it doesn't move at all during transport. One of the other things that we consider is why use an RGN, or really why, what are some things that go into considering what trailer should be used. First thing with an RGN, really, we have to think about is what does the customer have, especially for unloading capability? If the customer doesn't have a dock facility at their receiving location, the RGN is greatly beneficial because the RGN doesn't require a dock to load or unload. We're able to load the piece right from the ground, um, both on and off. Second thing we're considering when choosing the right trailer is height. Um, what the RGN does is it allows us to haul an extra tall commodity and carry it lower than some of the other types of trailers. That's going to reduce our height, probably keep us legal, and avoid any of those other overheight permits. The other type of trailer we could consider in this scenario would be a step deck trailer. It's certainly going to carry the load a little higher, so that has to be considered. And then also with a step deck trailer, generally you'd be looking for a dock location at the customer's receiving facility to offload that piece of equipment. So on this particular load, uh, the correct choice of trailer was the RGN, as this customer doesn't have a dock uh, or at their receiving location. And so having that need and ability to load it right from the ground and offload it right to the ground uh, makes the RGN the best choice trailer. So some top things that we look at in considering securement of a front end loader like this. Uh, number one, we want to make sure that we're meeting regulation. So in the case of heavy equipment, because it has tires or tracks and it weighs more than 10,000 pounds, it's going to require at least four securements, two at the back and two at the front. And in this case also, since it has a hydraulic accessory, that we need to secure that also. Then we look at, are we making sure we're covered for weight? Um, as depending on the size of chain we're using, we may or may not be covered uh, depending on the weight of the piece and the size of the chain. Thirdly, we're considering uh, the size of the chain uh, that the driver is using and the credit for that. Uh, we want to make sure that the driver has enough chains to cover for the weight. So depending on the weight of the machine, we might choose 5 16 3 8 or in this case, half inch. It's really about choosing the best tool for the job, uh, depending on the weight of the machine and how many securements it requires. That's calculated by basically taking the number of chains that you have times their, what, their value, credit, or also called working load limit. That number, when it's multiplied, should be greater than the weight of your machine to make sure that you're adequately covered. So now you should have a better understanding of the proper securement techniques for your heavy equipment. When you're ready to schedule your next construction equipment move, contact ATS for a quote or subscribe to our blog to get up-to-date information.